Hello, good morning, good morning. Welcome to Painting in Your PJs with Dr. Manette Riordan. I am Manette. I am in my PJs, super excited to finally be back with all of you after about a, a week away. And um, I have a lot I want to share this morning. So a lot going on. I feel like my energy is finally back and the new year is just beginning for me here on January 17th. It was kind of a forced slow entry due to having the flu. And I'm just delighted to be back in my studio and back connecting live with everyone on Painting in Your PJs. So if you're brand new to Painting in Your PJs, welcome. I'm so excited that you're here. I highly encourage you, if you're on Facebook, hop on over to YouTube. That's where the conversation is happening. The link is in the description. If you're here on YouTube and this is your first time stopping by, be sure to hit the subscribe button as well as the little notifications bell. That bell will notify you when I go live. My current schedule is Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday mornings at 7 a.m. Mountain Time. And if I'm not here by about five or 10 minutes after, then I probably won't be here that day. And that usually only happens because I did get sick or if I'm traveling, I let people know, try to let people know in advance because I do honor this time and I take it seriously because it's not only my commitment to sharing my art and my practice and my process with you, but it's a commitment to myself and my own creativity to show up here a minimum of three times a week. And it's amazing what that consistency can do to lift your spirit and help you become a better artist just through practice. And painting in your PJs is all about the power of art as a tool for self-discovery and personal growth. Good morning, Leslie. Great to see you, my friend. And um, what do I mean by using art as a tool for creative self-discovery. When we combine visuals with things that we're thinking about, it helps us to do two things. Sometimes it helps us to kind of embody the information even better because our brains think visually. We're actually very visual beings more than we're wordy beings, but we live in a culture that honors and celebrates words and thinking. But sometimes our art helps us to be more connected and engaged in simply who am I being as opposed to what am I thinking? Art can help us get below the unconscious to really understand what's happening in our heart, in our guts, in other parts of our body. It's a powerful tool and process for healing as well for expressing emotions, for getting them out from inside of us and onto the page in a very safe place. And I do this here, I show my own experience here on my YouTube channel, as well as in my classes, projects and programs. And I'm so excited to announce our next Mythical Makeover experience is going to be featuring one of my favorite, Good Morning Blanca, favorite girlhood novels, The Secret Garden. I love this book. So I taught a version of this last year. It's all new this year. It's going to be a three-day live experience, 90 minutes each day. The link to check that out is in the description of this video. So you can probably see that after the video is complete. Hey girl, good morning Tori, great to see you. And I'm super excited about the art projects for this one as well as the topics that we're going to be covering. So one of the things that we're going to be doing is making paper dolls to represent the aspects of our inner child. We're going to be working in the secret garden a lot with understanding what does it mean to be the hero of our own story. Good morning V, great to see you here my friend. And what I love about the main character, Mary, in The Secret Garden is it's a classic example of a heroine's journey. And she has to learn to be the hero of her story. When we see her at the beginning of the book, she is this spoiled, you know, um, taken care of, doesn't even know how to dress herself little girl, who is also in deep mourning because she's lost her parents. And she's in a strange land, in a strange house where with no one that she knows. Good morning, Yvonne. And her transformation 
through finding this secret garden and the people that she meets is such an inspiring metaphor for what's possible in our own lives on our personal journey of self-discovery. So the secret garden is happening uh, February 9, 10, and 11. It'll be at 9 a.m. Pacific time for 90 minutes, three days in a row. This is going to be all delivered live. We're going to be creating secret gardens. We're going to be creating paper dolls. It is going to be so much fun. I'm so excited to finally be sharing about this brand new Mythical Makeover experience for this year. And again, the, the link to that is in the description of this video. It'll also be going out in my email later today as well. So what are we going to talk about today? So I went through our list of January reflection prompts and I did put the link to download the list of prompts. It went out in my email a couple of weeks ago, but there's also a link to download those prompts in the description of this video. It's a free list of, I think there's 24 prompts specifically designed for January. What are we thinking about? What are we doing? who do we want to be? And so the prompt I picked for today is about exploring identity by creating an identity map. And when I saw the prompt and I thought about how do I want to visually explore this idea of an identity map, the, the thing that popped into my head in one of my current obsessions is sketchnoting. And if you aren't familiar with that, I'll tell you in just a minute. And the first thing that I did was, so the prompt said to explore our interests, our values, and our beliefs. So I took just a few minutes to do that writing part that I think is so potent before we engage in our visual creative process. Although sometimes it's the visual that comes first and then the writing, there's no wrong way to do it. But getting some of the ideas out of my head so that I can start to think about symbols, icons and things that would capture my interests, my values, and my beliefs. And so none of these will be a surprise to any of you that have followed me for a while or that know me personally. My interests are art, not just making art, but going to museums and sculpture gardens and looking at art, uh, connecting to nature, books, reading books, listening to books. And I usually, or I will often have like a Kindle and Audible and a print version of a book. I will have it in all of the forms. People are one of my big interests because connection is probably my highest value. I'm a total foodie. I love food. And home is something that I added on here as well. It's really something that's really important to me. One of my values is security. One of my beliefs is everybody has should have a place to belong. So a lot of that is symbolized by this idea of home. My values this morning are connection, creativity, choice believing that I always have a choice, knowing I always have a choice, and helping other people to also see they're always at choice because choice creates freedom. It's when we no longer see ourselves as a victim, but we get to choose how we treat ourselves, how we're treated by others. Health is really important to me this year. Spirituality is always important. And I put delight. So I was like, delight, fun, joy, play, happiness. But delight felt like this lovely word. It's also kind of a derivative of my word of the year, which is light. So that delight felt really yummy this morning to lean into as a value. And what are the things that I believe in? Love, compassion, kindness, peace, openness, welcome, belonging, solitude. I think I would add to that list, um, education. Like I deeply believe that literacy is essential as a building block for freedom. It's one of the causes that I care most deeply about on a bigger sort of more large scale um, perspective is liter literacy. If you ask me what's a cause that I support, then literacy is that cause. And so then I started thinking, okay, how do I want to display this? So sketch noting is a tool for visual thinking. So I love mind mapping, sketch noting. It's a way of using a combination of words 
and symbols to capture what we're thinking. Another name for it is sketch journaling or graphic recording. And I'm sure you've seen pictures of beautiful journals of people's pages of sketch notes. When we were doing our podcast a number of years ago, I would sketch note throughout the podcast to capture the the key points of whoever it was that we were interviewing. And it was such a fun process. And it tends to be one of those creative things uh, like Zentangle or uh, just drawing practice in general that every couple of years comes back to the foreground. And I recently connected with an artist on, in a, on Instagram named Anne Luke. Mm, I think it's L-U-E-C-K. And she does some really fun sketch journaling things. And so she got me kind of Okay, I'm getting a notice that my OBS disconnected. Did you guys lose me? Okay, looks like I am back. Sorry about that. We had a glitch. Okay, that was weird. Um, apologies. Get back over here to my OBS. Good morning, Marianne. I'm back. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> so I want to create a sketch note page that represents my visual identity. I'm going to use icons and symbols and stick figures to really, I know, snafus are so annoying. Yep. Welcome back. Thanks, Janet. Good morning. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for being here live, everyone. So I love drawing stick figures and cartoon type images and over the last few years I have kind of a cartoon version of myself that I have sketched a lot. I'm looking for just a, a drawing pencil here. I have all these like water soluble things. Oh here we go. So I thought I would start with a little bit of a cartoony self-portrait in the symbol and then surround myself in kind of sketch note style with some elements of these things that represent what I consider to be my identity. So we're going to see how it goes. I am not an expert at sketch noting but I have journals full of practicing drawing different icons and capturing ideas and I'm so wordy. Okay, awesome, great, good to know, thanks Blanca. That, you know, I tend to end up with a lot more words than images when I'm taking notes. So it's a different way of learning to think visually. So I think I wanna start with a banner up here at the top. And again, I'm working in a Hanamula sketch diary. I love these journals. They come in a variety of sizes. This is the, the largest one. But I think my favorite one is actually one size down from this one. I think this is like a eight and a half by five. So this one is a favorite. That one's already full, but I do like these, <coughs> excuse me, bigger ones as all. So I'm gonna draw a quick banner. And we can make it look even more like a banner with just some quick little marks on the end. I have pages and pages of practice drawing banners and I still always come back to kind of the simplest, let's zoom in just a little bit, version of this. And this is going to be an identity map. So I'm going to label it. And I think I also want to have the date in here. So maybe we'll do one of these that is a little bit more scrolly. So it looks a little bit there like it's folded. And I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna write the date so that when I'm going back through my journals, I will remember what I was thinking about myself at this moment in time on January 18th, 2024. 
And then I'm going to come in the center and draw this cartoon version of myself. And I'm not going to draw it too big. Nope because I want to have lots of room for drawing and sketching around the outside of it. And it's really fun to kind of come up with this idea of a sort of cartoon image or version of yourself. And again, this is stick figure style. So I'm literally just going to draw a circle and a triangle. So I've got my head, I've got my body. I'm going to give her some little feet. And one hand on my hip. And maybe kind of one hand open to receive there. And then remember, even with drawing a simple little cartoon or stick figure, I'm going to use the same principles of drawing a face that I would if I were, zoom back in again, if I were trying to sketch a more realistic face, because I just want those proportions to be in the right places, right? And that's actually a little high on the head. So let's try that a little bit again. So we divide the face in half lengthwise, and then we divide the face in half horizontally, and then we divide this space in half and this space in half for the bottom of the nose and the mouth, right? And so it always ends up coming out right. And so for me, I practice drawing this cartoon a lot, so I'm pretty comfortable drawing it. I always draw myself with glasses. I've been wearing glasses since my sophomore year in high school. Draw my short curly hair in here. <coughs> <coughs> And pardon the coughing, I am still coughing, but I am getting better. And then just a simple little mouth and some simple little eyes. So this doesn't need to be fancy at all, but the idea here is just to kind of visually capture who am I, right? Who am I? And then once I get to uh, adding some ink to this, I will come back and draw some patterns on her dress and give her some color. But I wanted to just get her down on the page first. So now I want to start to think about this idea of an identity map and what are my interests. So I'm going to start with art. Thank you, Yvonne. By the way, Yvonne, I so love the gorgeous pictures of your daughter. I think it was her birthday that you posted recently, and you guys look so much alike. So fun seeing pictures of our families. My daughter told me I'm not allowed to post photos on social media anymore without her permission, so I didn't post any holiday pictures from my kids. We'll get a little pencil in there. So this is going to kind of represent my love of art. And then the other thing I have on here is nature. And I can keep this really simple. It doesn't have to be really involved. You could also do this identity map with collage would be another fun way to think about representing an identity map. And I did think about collage as well. So I'm just going to stick a little flower in here. And I feel like I would be remiss not to have some mountains in here because I am loving living in the mountains, even though it's been crazy cold, although it's been crazy cold all over the United States this week. And 
and we've had a lot of clouds, which is made for incredible sunrises and sunsets. And then also remembering that my word of the year is light. So remember, I can integrate a combination of words and icons into my sketch note here. And the idea is just to capture the things that matter most to me. So one of the other things that was on my list was home. So maybe I'm just going to draw a quirky little house over here by the mountains. Again, I will add more detail to all of this when I add in black ink. So I'm literally starting with that idea of, you know, sketching the notes as a, as a place to start first and then adding detail a little bit later. And I'm happy because it's 29 degrees outside this morning instead of minus 12. Okay, I'm going to get rid of some of these extra lines. It helps us see a little bit better. Some of the other things that I said matter to me that I care deeply about are books. So maybe down here on this side, we're going to draw a little stack of books. And just pretend like there's some writing on those books. Give them a little bit of dimension. Um, food was something on my list. And food has a lot to do for me with people and connection and belonging, which are some of those things that are really, really important to me. So maybe I am going to come down here and draw a really simple round table. I always, always have loved the stories of King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. Since I was a girl, I started reading all kinds of fantasy fiction at a very young age, and I've never stopped. And then maybe we're just gonna keep this really simple. And I'm just gonna add a little bowl of fruit. I go through phases with different kinds of fruits that I like. My favorite fruit is a, a peach and we have amazing peaches here in the summer. In fact, that reminds me, I still have a few in the freezer. So I've got a bowl of fruit and then we're just gonna have some very abstract people kind of sitting around the edges of our table. It's really fun to draw stick figures and I went on Pinterest and just found a variety of different kinds of stick figures in different shapes and dimensions. So it can be a really fun activity to just practice drawing stick figures. And I think the key word there is just practice and the the more that we practice drawing the better that we get at it 
they don't even need faces. We just want to capture this idea of food, connection, belonging, all the things that matter the most to me. And if I want faces, you know, I would just keep it really simple. And I want to maybe enhance this just with a few little hearts. Again, just representing all of the things that matter most to me. So sometimes I, you know, we see people such beautiful, gorgeous pages of sketch notes or other types of illustration and keep it simple. I think when we're first learning something new that we expect to be perfect right out of the gate and we're not and so this for me is one of those things that the benefit of it is it gets me right back in to beginner's mind again <clears throat> let's see so we've got creativity and art and home and nature and people and food we've got love and compassion I had solitude on the list Education is also really important to me, but just with this one little simple sketch note, I've been able to really sort of get iconic elements of all the things that matter to me. And I definitely want to add some writing to the page so you can see I've kind of left some spaces where I can come in and add a little bit of writing. So I'm going to go ahead and come back and let's see. It's time for some new microns. And I'm just going to go over all of these lines with black. Some people are very confident in their sketch noting and they go straight to pen. I aspire to that. But I wouldn't say I'm there yet. But I'd love to hear from others. When you're thinking about this idea of an identity map, what are the things that interest you? We can start there. What are the things that interest you? And these sketch notes are fun to color with colored pencil, markers, or watercolor. I opted to keep it simple today and to just play with watercolor. Oh, excuse me, to play with colored pencil, not with watercolor. So I'd love to hear what are some of your interests, your values, your beliefs. What kinds of things would you put on your own identity map? And how would you visually represent them? Would you want to create an art journal page, a sketch note page, a collaged page? And I called the prompts for this month, Renew, Refresh, Reflect, Renew, Reflect, Refresh. Because I think as we step across this threshold and into the energy of a new year, it's a great time to just pause. Don't buy into new year, new you for sure. But it is a powerful time because there's nothing wrong with you to kind of think about what matters most to you. What matters most to you? And when we start to think about what matters, 
then we want to look at this idea of identity, interests, values, beliefs. They're big questions. So actually all the prompts are big, deep, thoughtful questions because the more that we're willing to do some of that deep reflection, the better we get to know ourselves, the more authentic and aligned we feel, the more meaningful our life feels. And this is the source of helping us to identify our purpose is by understanding ourselves and what matters to us. I'm not worrying too much about going over all of these lines perfectly. All right, you guys are being very quiet this morning. Is this too deep for 7 a.m. in the morning? No doubt, Tori, no doubt, right? So many shared interests, right? Um, the other one that I would write on there, Tori, that thinking of you made me think of it that I didn't write specifically, but I would say is incorporated is family, right? So family is so, so important to me and feeling close to my family. And that gathering around the, the dinner table is something we were the family growing up that always had family dinner together and big extended family meals and then we continued that with our own kids so both my husband and I grew up with family dinner matter mattered and we both come from families that loved food and often still gather around food she needs a pocket. My daughter always talks about pockets, right? And uh, she loves pockets. And she's always looking for dresses and pants and slacks that have pockets to put her hands in. All right, and we'll get our little group of family and friends around the table here and then I'm going to add some color and I will do the writing last which allows me to be back in that state of deep reflection and deciding what do I want to write on here what matters the most. And again, all of these things are simply icons or symbols. They're representations. They're not perfectly drawn, but when I come back to this page, they're going to easily capture who I'm being at this particular moment in my life. And actually, if I look across my entire 50, 59 years so far, Not much has changed since childhood. So the other thing about doing this is looking at how have I always been this person and maybe I lost sight of this person at times, but it always comes back to the same values, the same interests and the same beliefs.
and there's comfort in that and knowing that about ourselves. So there we have our quick little sketch note page of the things that I value. I'm going to grab just a few colors and add a little bit of color to this and then do some journaling. I've been obsessed with orange lately. I've been using lots of orange all over the place. Let's get a something mountain colored here. Close enough. So I pulled out this pencil and you probably can't see because it's not detailed enough. It's completely gnawed on the end. So apparently one of the cats had a lot of fun chewing. Most of the time sketch noting is done with markers and is often monochromatic, meaning just black plus one color of marker or a couple of colors. This is a great way to journal your daily life and to kind of capture what's going on simply. The journal I'm working in upstairs is a six by six square, which is just the right size to be able to just spend 15 minutes or so at the end of the day. All right, that hair is pretty brown. It's really not showing my, my gray hair there, but that's okay. It is a cartoon after all. Let's see. You can tell how well loved my Prismacolors are. I've had these for years and years. At some point they get to where they're hard to, to hold on to because they get so tiny. So I've been on this interesting journey in my studio over the last few weeks. I started looking around it because we finally got a, a, a system installed to hang paintings here in my studio. And um, most of my art that I love is hanging upstairs in the in the main part of the house. And so we needed to, so the stuff that was hanging on the walls down here wasn't favorite stuff. And so I wanted to either create something new or, let's see, make the roof blue, or redo what was here. And I'm very fond of painting over my painting. So one by one I've been pulling paintings off of the wall and repainting them. I repainted an owl. I touched up a squirrel. I'm about to repaint a bear. <clears throat> and I don't need to love all of my paintings, but the ones I don't love, I didn't necessarily want hanging up looking at me because they hang right across from where I sit at my work computer. And it feels good to put the effort in, just like with sketch noting, to just go back and do it again, 
right? If I don't like it, if it doesn't feel quite right, not quite good enough. Usually it's the, the drawing for me that's off, like the per perspective's not quite right or the shape of the face isn't quite right. And I haven't posted pictures anywhere of the owl yet, but I really love how the owl painting came out. And the squirrel is better than it was, and I'm excited about tackling this bear painting next. I love painting animals in my own personal painting practice. And so when you look at your art, don't be afraid to do it again, to let go of the page and start over. Bye Blanca, I love that sweetie about doing a timeline is another great one to do in this sketch note style. Absolutely. And again, I'm working with a, a very limited color palette. I don't need a, a ton of color here. What are other people working on today as you're listening and following along and thinking perhaps about what do you believe? What are you interested in? What are your values? And the other reason that I love doing something like this, especially at the beginning of the year, is because when I think about how do I want to spend my time I want to make sure I'm spending time on the things I'm interested in that I value and that I believe, right, that are aligned with my beliefs. I'm not going to put time, energy, thought, money, right, into something that is out of alignment with who I am. I don't want to spend time with people that don't bring me joy. So as you think about the things that you're interested in, are they in your schedule for this year? Do you have a plan to do more of them? When you look at the list of the things that you value, are your activities and your actions aligned with your values? So for me, I put health on my list of values, which means spending more time outside in nature, moving my body. It means eating lots of healthy foods. Right. So all of these things that I value are incorporated just in these very little, simple, iconic or symbolic drawings about who am I and what really matters this year. And it's typical of me to have a journal going that really represents all the different styles of art. So I like to have one journal at a time that I'm working in. So this one has painting, it has collage and mixed media, it has lots of writing, it has drawing, it has my sacred circle practice, has color wheel practice, right? Zen tangle practice. So when you think about 
working in a journal like this, make sure that you have spaces that are just for practice. I don't need every page in this to be beautiful or perfect or all the same, right? This is my personal journal where I'm exploring styles and voices. So I wanna add just a few, I think, lists in here to make sure some of those things that I wrote about over here actually end up in the page. And I'm just gonna do some simple bullet points. I love using my own handwriting in my art. One of the benefits of going to Catholic school I have very neat handwriting, although it's gotten messier and messier the older I've got and the less time that I spend writing and the more time I spend arting and typing. And these aren't in any particular order. This is just the way that they came out of my head and onto paper. And down here, I want to put my values. And so many of us, you know, are curious about taking on a journaling practice where we're doing more writing or maybe engaging in morning pages where you're writing three stream of consciousness. And I've done that off and on since the late 90s, have in, you know, done the, the Julia Cameron style morning pages. But ultimately what I found is this type of sketch noting, bullet list, sometimes I have lots of pages of long form writing, but when I just wanna capture ideas, this is such a great way to do it. A few images, a few words, and it's enough. I have journal pages full of this cartoon image of me. Lucky you, Carol. Sleeping in sounds amazing. Welcome, welcome. Um, we're just finishing up, but the replay will be available. And Carol, the link to download the January prompts is now in the description of this video as well as Tuesday's video. And over here, I'm going to just put, I believe in love, compassion, kindness, Making lists like this about our identity also has a lot to do with two things with one authenticity, and two, alignment. If I'm feeling off kilter, out of sorts, unhappy, I can come back to this interest, values, and beliefs look and see what's not aligned. Am I spending time with someone that I really don't want to be? Am I um, only engaging in activities that feel hard and like drudgery?
All right, so simple, simple little pages, right? That really kind of are a wonderful <coughs> <coughs> snapshot of who we are and where we are. Good morning, Mom. And this one, I'm just putting the cause that I care about, which I talked about at the beginning, literacy. And saying that and writing that here on this page, I can look at what am I doing to support that this year? Do I have a plan in place to make a contribution of time, energy, or money to causes that support liter literacy. One of my favorite organization is Pencils of Promise, which builds schools and provides education for youth and adults in a few different places around the world. All right, my friends, that is today's quick identity map, sort of exploring interest values and beliefs, a fun, different way to look at connecting with ourselves on the page that's just a little bit more visual and a little bit different. Thanks, Tori. I appreciate that. Yeah, awesome, Judy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, as always, for joining me live. Thanks for watching the replay. I'm Dr. Minette Riordan. This is Painting in Your PJs with Minette. Be sure to like the video. Let people know that it is a video worth watching. It really helps me a lot when you guys do that. And uh, I just appreciate those of you that are here live and those of you that take the time to watch the replays. So a quick sketch note or sketch journal page connecting to identity and a glimpse and a snapshot of who am I being as I go forth into 2024. I will be back live for the last time this week tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Mountain Time. And uh, I hope to see you guys all again. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a beautiful rest of your day.